Forget Betelgeuse, Visa Gita is the new cool git in the stellar neighborhood. I had recently done a video on the Betelgeuse supernova, which did fairly well. So when I heard in less than a month later we had found another potential supernova candidate, I was thrilled. Especially because the chances of the Betelgeuse supernova actually happening were looking dimmer every day. Literally. So V Sagitta. It's a binary star. 7800 light years from Earth in the constellation Sagitta. It's a relatively unknown star, mostly due to the fact it's not visible to the unaided eye having an apparent magnitude of around 10 positive. In 1902, astronomers discovered Fisigitae as a variable star, and in 1963, a team of astronomers led by George Hebrick identified the star as a binary star. The binary system consists out of a degenerate white dwarf star of about 1.9 solar masses and a swollen red giant of around 3.3 solar masses. The stars currently orbit each other about once every 12 hours and eclipse each other each orbit. The pair is in the late stages of an inward spiral. The period is increasing, meaning the stars are spiraling into each other. The white dwarf has become a vampire star, attracting material from the red giant. The whole system is a textbook example for a type 1a supernova. The thing you need to understand about white dwarf stars is that they are physically limited to a mass of 1.44 solar masses, which is known as the Chandrasekhar limit. Beyond this, the star has enough mass to reignite nuclear fusion. The general hypothesis is that a white dwarf accumulating more than 1.44 solar mass will reach the ignition temperature for carbon fusion as it approaches the limit. The star will momentarily exceed the limit and begin to collapse, again raising the temperature past the nuclear fusion ignition point. Within a few seconds of ignition, of nuclear fusion, a substantial fraction of the matter of the white dwarf undergoes a runaway reaction, being blown out, releasing enough energy to unbind the star in a supernova explosion. The energy released is roughly equal to the conversion of one entire Earth mass to pure energy. Professor Schaffer led a new study of the star which revealed that the system over the last century had increased in brightness by a factor of 10. Over the next few decades, the star will brighten rapidly. Around the year 2083, its accretion rate will rise catastrophically, spilling mass at an incredible high rate onto the white dwarf. With this material blazing away, in the final days of this death spiral, all the mass from the companion star will fall onto the white dwarf, creating a supermassive wind from the merging star, appearing as bright as Sirius, possibly even as bright as Venus. This admittedly won't be as bright and spectacular as the Betelgeuse supernova, however we do have reasonable evidence we will get to see at least one supernova within in our lifetimes. Well, my lifetime at least. The 2083 date has an 11 year precision, which means it might explode any time between 2072 and 2094. But we will be waiting. This has been EG Science, and thank you for watching. Be sure to check out some of my other videos if you are new here, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.